I love things like that. That's so satisfying to know as well that it all evens out and it's just so equal. Yeah. Um, I will uh, change gears possibly slightly. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. Today is day 50, a milestone, and we're going to be covering numbers 18, 19 and 20. In Numbers 18, the Lord speaks to Aaron, the duties of the Levites, Aaron's sons and himself in the tabernacle, and talks about inheritance and tithes. Numbers 19, the Lord tells Moses and Aaron laws of uncleanness relating to touching dead people. And in Numbers 20, Israel moves to Zin, Miriam dies, Aaron dies, and Eleazar replaces him. Nice, man. Day 50. That's good job, mate. I'm proud of us for for cracking on and doing this and still got a long way to go but hey any yeah. right county wins we're about not quite one seventh of the way through but yeah day 50 does feel significant and well done to all of you viewers and listeners as well for following along with us for yeah years. we appreciate that which little update we've had uh, listeners and downloads from what do we say spain zimbabwe New Zealand mm-hmm. like we're starting to actually get a bit more of a sort of global traction you know just individuals here and there but genuinely whether you've listened once or listened every day and this is your 50th day we do appreciate and value you so thank you very much yeah absolutely absolutely and um yeah I, I I just can't believe it I can't wait to see what will happen within 365 days seriously man we might get some people from uh Cote d'Ivoire in Africa. Well, yeah, I mean, currently South America is the only place that is untouched. I don't know if I mentioned that the other day, so we need some... Yes, you did. Yeah, I didn't so, know if I mentioned it on the podcast or not, but if I did, listen, whatever. You yeah. didn't, you didn't in the podcast, but listeners and viewers, if any of you know anyone that lives in South America, please like and share, or simply Indeed. share. So, Sweet, well, there's two minutes, and I've got a lot to chat about, so we should uh, crack on. Um, yes, what I love in here, right, because it starts talking about how uh, the Levites don't basically receive any of the money that comes in or the stuff or the goods that come in, but mm. they receive the tithes from the other tribes. And I think that is so important because, A, it's sort of specifying that you have to be tithing, you have to be supporting those that are doing God's work, and that is so important. And I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again, I'm sure, but it's so important. But when you actually break down the numbers of it, it's really cool because there are certain times and places where actually pastors don't get a very decent wage and actually the tithe is really important to help top that wage up to a reasonable sort of cost of living uh, or standard of living. But actually because there are 11 other tribes 10 percent of each of those tribes represents one full tribe's wage plus 10 percent but the levites still have to tithe on the money that they get which goes back into maintaining the sanctuary and all that stuff so actually by the time the levites have given their 10 percent as well they are earning what would be the con- considered a full wage in that time so they still have same sort of social standings and everything because everything should be divided evenly and it just it breaks it all down to being even again which is just i love those numbers and it's just it's just cool i love it that's so cool that's so cool and it's also cool to have an amersham school boy doing some maths for us yeah um thank you mr it was, the, it was, it was the <laughs> apologetics no seriously that is so cool i love things like that that's so satisfying to know as well that it all evens out and it's just so equal yeah um I will uh, change gears possibly slightly. So you are to have the part of the most holy offerings that is kept from the fire. Numbers 18, 9. God gives Aaron more than we could possibly deserve as well. So there are things that should be burnt up and given to God that he receives. And obviously he's also part of that. The, the priesthood right and the levites mm-hmm. um the lord says to aaron you will have no inheritance in their land nor will you have any share among them i am your share and your inheritance among the israelites imagine god telling you i am your share of inheritance i just sit, put no that's numbers 18 20 i just put that's the best deal like yeah who cares about the earthly inheritance and stuff if god says i am your inheritance. so good so cool right yeah so so cool love it i love 
Um, so, I'm going to skip gear again here. You may need to jump back. I'm going to go straight into numbers 20 because this is where, and this is a big part of it. This is something that's always resonated with me. Moses is instructed to, they're complaining about being thirsty again. So God told Moses to speak to the rock and water will come out of it. But Moses mm. doesn't speak to the rock. He hits the rock with his staff, which is exactly what he did last time. I think this is the right part, right? I probably should have made sure. Yeah. Um, exactly what he did last time for water to come out, but that's not what God told him to do. And it's just this whole thing of doing precisely what God tells you to do. Listen to his voice and do it just because something worked last time. Don't use the same thing. If God wants you to do something different. And what I found, I find interesting is Moses didn't do what God asked him to do, but water still came out. Mm. But the repercussions of not doing what God wanted him to do were pretty severe. Like at this point, this was like, okay, you're not going to head into the promised land either. Right. But yeah. he missed out so much of his inheritance from being disobedient. But his, if you wanted to put that into a modern text, really, that that prayer of his let water come out was still answered, but he missed so much of what God had him set aside for. So mm. just because it works doesn't mean we're necessarily doing it the right way right and also i suppose in that even if you find something that you feel is working that doesn't even mean that you've maximized ever maximized what god can bring to you yeah if you should be more obedient and more following what he says so so yeah that's really interesting isn't it i i didn't remember why it was that moses was effectively punished for this and that's just explained it to yeah. me that's really interesting. I am going to skip back just for a minute. So there's a couple of things. Um, so Eleazar, uh, Aaron's son, who eventually becomes the new head priest when Aaron dies. Spoiler alert. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds anyway. Um, he is to take some of the blood of, of the heifer, I believe it was offering, mm -hmm. and sprinkle it seven times toward the front of the tent. And this is a slight signification, I think, of this might be above our pay grade, as we said, but I think it's significant of like preparing him to fulfill an even higher role within the priesthood. I love the fact it's seven times. There's just this consistency with that, isn't there? Yeah. Um, I love that. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I got from Numbers 19 is Numbers 19, 19. Those who are being cleansed must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and that evening they will be clean. Again, just the medical understanding of Bronze Age Middle Earth here, you know? is just so much better i know you're chuckling and shaking your head obviously i know it's bronze age middle east i love um, running with it now aren't you you're like I've I am, I am. there's a couple of catchphrases one of them is bronze age middle earth and the other one is it's above our pay grade yeah um you know if we ever have merch which i doubt but we it will be one of your fidget spinner things a hundred percent and some of those multicolored pens everyone who's listening is just like i don't know what they're going on about anyway um but yeah, just the medical understanding. We've talked about this before, but it's just, it's so ahead of its time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's obvious that the source of that knowledge is the infinite source. Um, I feel a bit ashamed of this last one. And then we need to sort of talk about Aaron and his death and everything. But <laughs> there Miriam died and was buried, Numbers 20, uh, verse 1. I had just put, where's Mi who was Miriam? And obviously I've worked that out. Well, I asked you, didn't I? Who's yeah. Miriam, Aaron's wife. So sorry about that, Miriam. I forgot sister. It was Aaron and Moses' sister because they're brothers. Oh, sister. Right. Okay. Yes. I still didn't know. I'm sorry, Miriam. <laughs> she dies as well. There you go. Yes. Um, I wanted to touch on just something fairly briefly here as well. And it's this whole section here where uh, Moses is trying to get them just to travel through Edom and the king of Edom is denying it. This is Mo uh, Moses, this is numbers 20, 14 and sort of through to 21. And it's this whole thing of like just bearing a grudge, staying <sighs> stubborn in your heart, not forgiving, all these kind of things of like, no, this isn't what it's going to do and what it's going to be like because it goes into the topic of unforgiveness and again i think i don't know whether it was an original uh, jeff price quote but effectively he said that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to be affected by it and to yeah. suffer it doesn't work like that we have to forgive we have to be open to people so yeah yes. on that note any questions feel free to interact with us on insta at super it's in the bible 
And please consider liking and subscribing to help share, share or spread the word of God.